excellent. All right. Well, it being 6.30, we'll call the meeting of the Community Preservation Committee to order. Uh, I guess if we could get a roll call for attendance, please. Chairman Bakey. Uh, present. Vice Chair Slagle. Present. Member McCall. Present. Member Butenheis. Present. Member Gallivan. Member Gallivan. Member Liang. Present. Member Linehan. Member DePeso. Member Shea. All right, I think that was a quorum though, so uh, we can conduct business. Our first item is the minutes of the January 13th meeting for approval. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. All right, and a second. Seconded. Thank you. Any discussion on the minutes? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Uh, so we have no continued business, no new business, but a lot of other business. So our next uh, item is an update on the City Council CPA votes. Um, and this is very exciting. Um, I had the pleasure to be with, uh, joined by Member McCall, Member Slagle, and Member Butenheis were, were there um, uh, earlier this week when the City Council unanimously approved um, all of the recommendations for all of the projects that are not being bonded. Uh, and uh, that was a tremendous uh, vote of confidence and support in the program. I think it's gonna do a lot of real good work out in the community. And we look forward to the votes and discussion on the two, bond, the two that the committee recommended be bonded uh, coming up in a week and a half, I guess now, a week from Tuesday. So anyone um, have any other comments on the city council action? Okay, uh, our next one is a discussion and review of the application process and materials. Discussion on the 2021 Community Preservation Act application process and provide input for ways to improve the process for 2022, as well as reviewing the updated application materials. So we'll open it up for any comments from the members. So what, um, I think the, uh, the one shortfall in the process was the transition from uh, our approval and recommendations onto city council. Um, th there, was, there seemed to be a lot of um, miscommunication between the councilors that came back to, you know, I, I know I fielded several councilors' questions regarding what was applicable some of the, the, the deeper meanings of some of these projects, what our intent and beliefs were behind them. Um, some pretty intricate questions. Um, I, I'm not sure how we can recommend to provide them more information, but I don't think that they got the full package right away. Um, <clears throat> the, the link to the, um, the database, the What's it called? The, uh, the center, the document center. Um, I, had, I don't think they had that. I mean, um, until I am. Um, the vote. I, I do agree that I do think there was some miscommunication, um, but I think it's because our actions and the allocations were published out of context and they didn't have the. Um, conditions attached to them, which I think added to a lot of confusion, and then there was a lot of rush on behalf of staff. So I think as a committee, we should just agree to have our correspondence about our actions come from staff, and so that way maybe we can make sure everything is done in context. And obviously if people are watching and following along and can view the minutes, um, they're probably going to have more context. But, you know, we always welcome the City Council to attend and watch every single meeting but they have a lot of commitments and so we can't rely on them to be as involved as we are so i think i actually think staff did a really great job turning it around in one week at to to have a memo on the um city council agenda but i that would just be my recommendation is that we just let staff sort of lead the process post our vote yeah that that certainly is i think good counsel I, and i also want to thank the staff for um, their efforts to put everything together fairly quickly and, and get it out. And I think that was a big part of why we can um, sort of 
proudly comment on the prior agenda item that the council did indeed act so quickly. Um, I think also part of the challenge this year was that this is the first year. And I think everybody, including the members of the city council and us, frankly, are learning a lot about how this program works and what's possible and, and what's not possible and so forth. And I think that that was part of some of, you know, a big part, I think, of actually a lot of the discussion, uh, both, um, you know, the formal discussion and some of the informal questions. Uh, the one thing that I would request is that if there, or when the recommendations are communicated as a memo, if we could make sure that the conditions that the, the committee votes are explicitly stated in the memo. That did seem to be the one thing that um, a lot of the questions I got when I went on the radio on behalf of the committee as well as uh, from I heard from a lot of counselors was well did you did you have any conditions and that sort of thing and and uh, we did obviously and the minutes demonstrated that and there was opportunity to make that clear but it was not in that initial communication memo um, and that's probably the one thing that that would have made a, um, a significant difference in reducing some of the confusion uh, and then the other is just doing this a bit. And I think, you know, each future year, I suspect that um, everybody's going to get a little better at it and a little more familiar with it. And I think that's going to make our job a little harder, actually. <laughs> I think we're going to have a lot more interest in applications. Yes. Um, but, um, but I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll get there. <clears throat> I actually um, I don't it, know this. Oh, go ahead, Eric. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make one quick comment, which was to say that, um, I, I think that going forward, um, the, the plan will be and should be to let the counselors know and the manager know that what we're going to do is submit formal, a formal recommendation and they will get it, you know, in, in due time once the council, once the committee votes. Uh, I do think that there was some confusion at the administration level about how the process worked because it's new and the counselors are obviously convert confused about the, how the process worked. But so I think that prior to us taking a vote, we're going to communicate to the council exactly what they can expect. Um, so that then we can do those formal recommendations and have time to put them together. And then that that should include the information that I think the council was, 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 was grappling for not having. And I think they didn't realize they didn't have it because the process kind of got ahead of itself. So um, I, I think that's, that's what I think we should be doing going forward i would say that you know the the unanimous votes were very um you know positive it, it really kind of it was really nice to have that response after so much um back and forth and every counselor having you know one project that doesn't feel right and um at the end everybody came around and realized that you know the, the staff had done uh, a great job turning over the materials that they needed, you know, when, once the, the questions started coming out and um, that the committee had put together, you know, the right list of projects. So um, thank you. I had one additional comment and it was more about our process. And I think it's because we're in a Zoom world and the last meeting, all of the staff, I mean, not the staff, well, the staff and the committee were all in person but 99% of the applicants were via Zoom. I actually think some of the applicants were confused by some of the conditions that we imposed. And so there was a lot of explaining after the fact. Mm -hmm. And I know we're not, when we, we intentionally made that last meeting not to be a public hearing, but rather a public meeting because it was our turn to talk. It almost, and I don't, we're, this is not a land use board, but one of the things I do appreciate about that process is the chair, says we're voting to approve this project with these conditions do you understand them and do you have a question mm -hmm. and I, I just wonder if maybe we and I believe none of the applicants have any issues with the conditions I don't mean to say that I think it was just the next day I was like, what were those conditions again can you please send me the language <laughs> yeah. because I was just listening into the zoom and I I couldn't quite ask and so I just think that's something we could take care of moving forward yeah, I think we'll have some opportunity as we um, go forward also to be a little more explicit about the conditions at the time that each project is being voted on as a recommendation instead of what we did this time was sort of agree on the distribution of funds 
and then circle back and identify all the appropriate conditions based on different types of projects. But I think part of that was a learning curve for us to realize we had to do those things. I imagine that we will be able to discuss those more in the moment with the projects. Um, and that may be a little bit easier for folks as well. I also frankly hope that COVID is going to ease a wee bit and we'll all maybe all be in person uh, <laughs> next year at this time. <clears throat> all that to say is I really enjoy working with all of you. And I think we did a great job and I'm looking forward to the future projects. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the other, uh, that I don't want to cut off discussion of the process and welcome additional comments from folks, but I also do want to make sure um, we do have a draft uh, revision to the eligibility form in front of us and I want to make sure we also discuss if there's anything that would be helpful to the committee in the forms themselves. Um, I know there were a fair number of questions from committee members and often the same question from the committee to all of the applicants or many of the applicants. So it may be that there's some things we want to make sure we're asking in the form so that we actually have those answers. Um, right up front. So I don't know if folks have any questions on or, or comments on that, the actual forms that we use. The only thing that I can think of that we went back to each applicant with the question of is if they could take funds over multiple years. Mm -hmm. um, that and the use table I think is a great addition. Um, I don't even, I don't know if it's necessary to put it on the form or not. I. I spent some t time debating, but I thought I'd bring it up, seeing as we asked everybody. Yeah, and actually, I think I would argue that that will be more important going forward. Probably, yeah. I think we're going to have, we're likely going to see more applica applications in the next couple of years, and we're going to have less money. So I think being able to discuss multiple years is going to be more, uh, definitely an important consideration. So I think if, yeah, if we could, I guess, if we could ask that for the, doesn't, doesn't need to be in the eligibility form, but in the actual application form, if we could have a question that explicitly asks if the applicant is willing to accept uh, a multi-year uh, award. We can add that. Are there other things that would be helpful to ask of all the applicants? The, the one thing I was gonna throw out was something that, um, so I, and this is more of a question, so I want to know what people think. Um, for the CPA eligibility chart, I, I do think that there was something brought up. I don't know if it might have been by the the, uh, the Community Preservation Coalition, but an effort to try to just tell people they can only choose one. Um, please select one, <laughs> one thing under which you are app applying um, instead of having everybody pick a bunch of different things and thus have to kind of wade through it afterwards i don't know what what people thought about that and yeah, maybe we could just I'm looking at the eligibility form in front of us here maybe we just instead of having the check boxes down below just have the chart and ask them to identify the the, the category that best describes their application the one category that best describes their application because there will be some that that might have components as there were this year there were some that had components of multiple pieces but if they could identify the thing that best describes it, um, that might, and just have them circle it or check it, whatever, whatever makes sense. I'm not sure if this is appropriate for the eligibility form or the final application, but it, maybe this is just me. Um, I had a hard time with a couple of applications understanding what the actual activities they were going to be using the money for. And so I don't know if it needs to be on the application form or if we need to have it as a required addendum, but submit a budget and to actually tell us what line item you're gonna use CPC funds for. And again, I'll leave it to the committee. I'm not sure if we think that's appropriate for the eligibility portion or if the final, like their full submission. But I do know that I had, a, I had trouble with that. I, I'd agree with that also. I, think that's I agree for the full submission, I think. Yeah, okay. to have them have present, provide a a reasonably detailed project budget and identify the specific activities that they expect to use CPA funding for would be very helpful. With regards to the table, um, I 
I feel like the most important part of the, the CPA is that description of the categories and what is eligible. Maybe a, a link to that portion of the, the act uh, included in this so it's easy access and people can read and review it and make sure that they, I know we had at least one application that ended up not falling into, the, into any of the categories upon further review. And everything else is pretty self-explanatory, I think, especially in the eligibility form. So uh, one more review might not hurt. Do you have any comments from the other members who I, th I think uh, Member DePeza and, and uh, Member Liang are on? Do either of you have any comments on either the process or the forms? I think what I had before was that I think uh, uh, Eric already mentioned, you know, about the different categories where, you know, do you have to choose one or do you have to choose multiple one? So that was one of the things that stuck in uh, my mind from the uh, pre previous application. So um, I, I think that was mostly my, my concern, you know, when, so when you already have on the form and you can check whether one box or two boxes and then we'll just, you know, cut out the different and, and the, the, the questioning as well. So I like that one too. Also, I think Member Gallivan has joined. Do you, do you have any questions or comments? Hi, hey everyone. I've been here uh, since the beginning. I just had a short audio issue, uh, so I've heard a meeting. Thank you. Um, I do not have any uh, questions or comments. Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, all told, I want to really um, give thanks and credit to both the staff and the committee members for um, as we all have been learning along the way, uh, what was really a very successful process for the first time through, uh, especially given that it was the first time through. So um, I really appreciate working with all of you on this and appreciate everybody's uh, thoughtful input and um, you know running what really turned out to be a pretty smooth process for, for our first time, especially. Any other comments on that? Uh, all right, our last agenda, last substantive agenda item tonight is discussion of the 2022 CPA plan outreach. Discussion of outreach to update the community preservation plan. Uh, note that the 2022 public hearing for the CPA will be held on March 24th. Um, so for those who are watching uh, from home, please make a note of that date. Um, that is a really important part of our process. I think this past year we had a public hearing in April that really helped to inform both the plan but it also really helped, I think, the committee members understand what the some of the sort of community priorities were um, in, and it really helped guide the process of recommending um, which projects to support. So um, that is a really important place for folks to have input on this process. And we really, um, that's one of those times when we actually look forward to a long night because that means there's a lot of people um, sharing um, and participating in that process. Apologies um, in advance about the long night. <laughs> Sorry, not to interject, um, if I may, Mr. Absolutely. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to provide an update on our plan for public outreach this year in addition to the public hearing. Um, so last year, our public engagement efforts were really successful. We had a public hearing and um, 20 people spoke at that public hearing. And we also had a survey that was launched in four languages. Um, that obtained over 280 responses. Uh, we wanna continue to supplement the public hearing with additional outreach um, to hopefully hear from folks that we would, that would not typically attend a public hearing. Um, so this year we were thinking of tabling at various locations throughout the city, ideally one location per uh, neighborhood or city voting ward to do a micro engagement activity. Um, so the activity that we were thinking of doing uh, would consist of having a large, basically pad of paper split into three sections representing each of the three um, types of CPA funding that's awarded. Um, each participant would have 10 stickers and would be required to place one in each of the three categories for that first 10% that's required for each category and then they could allocate the remainder of the stickers to whatever category they feel um, 
they would like to see CPA funds go toward. Um, in doing this, we would hopefully be able to gauge the areas that residents of each neighborhood feel would most benefit from CPA funding in their neighborhood. Um, and we feel that having neighborhood level data would actually be really helpful. Um, and then we would also have the option for participants to submit open response comments that we could collect and analyze. Um, and we had the vision of holding some kind of like micro level engagement every year moving forward and then um, relaunching a survey every five years for more in-depth um, perspective gauging from residents. Um, so that is our proposed plan for public engagement for this year and I'm really curious to hear your thoughts and whether you have any suggestions or thoughts on that. Well, um, can't speak for the whole group, but I think I appreciate that very much and think that uh, your, uh, uh, I, I absolutely commend and, and really appreciate the efforts to, to find a way to reach out to a broad cross section of the community. This program in particular is really about meeting community needs and ident we have to identify them before we can meet them. And uh, so uh, being able to use tools like the ones you described to get a level of engagement beyond what we can get out of public hearing, I think is fantastic. Um, the one thing I heard in that description that gave me a, a little bit of pause was that a kind of core activity would just be around voting on the various categories. Um, I'm not convinced, and, and please, if the other members disagree, jump right in, but I'm not convinced that that gives us data that's particularly actionable. The survey we did the last time round the, the sort of relative interest in the categories was, was somewhat helpful, but what was really helpful about it was the discussion of different ways we might spend money within the categories. And if you could figure out a way, I know it's harder, the more if when you're tabling or doing sort of quick um, engagement like that, it's hard, but the more you can gather information about, you know, within housing, within the concept of community housing, what are the priorities? Within the concept of historic preservation, what are the priorities? Within open space and recreation, what are the priorities? Because ultimately, since we do have to spend some money on each of those categories every year, understanding what will most resonate with the community within the categories is probably gonna be particularly valuable. And I suspect you only get one shot at that kind of intercept engagement. So if you only get one question, that one would be more valuable than which one you like best. And that's, again, that's my opinion. If others feel differently, please jump right in. Um, I think that's a fair comment. And I think based on what Fran described, I think you probably could have then split, you know, we have the three categories and then categories, of, you know, three categories within the categories. I think she talked about 10 stickers. So I think then maybe, you know, color coded. I think there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wonder, um, I don't know what your micro-engagement locations are. Um, and I don't know that I want you to do three in each neighborhood. That seems like a lot of outreach. But I think if you are, you know, are you going to do a market basket in every neighborhood? But if you're at a park, maybe you just focus on a, you just ask people about, hey, we're at a park, so let's just ask about open space today. And if you're in a denser neighborhood or, you know, maybe you can pick and choose. Um, I, I'm not sure. But that could be an option too, if it felt too onerous to have all those categories. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I mean, in addition to what Fran just said, um, if there's some kind of samples that can be, you know, put under categories to explain uh, to just regular folks, I mean, that would be helpful as well. And um, in, in in addition to what uh, uh, Christine just said, I, uh, I I think I probably asked for more work from France. Um, I was thinking that, um, you know, since this year, we do have eight districts that represent by, you know, different councils, uh, councilor. Um, I think it would be a good idea to, uh, you know, poke the opinion as to uh, what are some of the, you know, location that, um, you know, that we want to be, uh, you know, tabling at, 
you know, so that we can reach the, the, the full core of the city of Lowell. And, um, you know, and I guess to, to basically is to make sure that all the districts understand these are the location. If you want us to go into additional locations, just let us know. Uh, I just want to relay that information so that we make sure outreach to different areas of the city of Lowell. I think that that, that local, um, the district counselor approach is a, is a good idea. Um, I would say the, the, the most common question, comment that I got from, you know, my neighbors, my friends was, um, I think that this improvement on city property would be a great idea. How do we, how do we tap into the CPA funding? Um, and you know, thankfully we have the district counselors, so that path might be a little bit clearer now that, you know, somebody to advocate for those, those positions that the community around them kind of is advocating for. Um, but we might, we might encourage, you know, specifically encourage our neighbors to be more vocal about the things that they want as a community in their, in their neighborhood. Um, and I think, I, I think that's really the, the purpose of you tabling at such a small level is to really get get some of those things out so um, it could be as simple as just putting your favorite idea into each one of the buckets of the three different areas um, what you know and, and you know I can imagine there'll be a lot of ineligible projects but there'll be a lot of a lot more that are eligible because the people attending these 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 kind of events will uh, have at least got a first round under their belt like we have so <laughs> They get as good of the guesses. Uh, I just want to say thank you for willing, being willing to do micro engagement. And I think you've heard clearly from us that maybe specific examples and however you think it's best to get those from the, I'm going to trust your judgment because you're the planner and, and I think you'll get us what we need, you know, but we definitely, I think you've heard from us. We would appreciate more specific examples. And so awesome. Thank Sounds you good. for. Thank you. And I guess you should, I, you should keep us posted. Um, I know I would like to at least to participate at one or two tables, so, and I'm sure other members might as well. Absolutely. And I would, I'm sure we could distribute the labor a little bit too. <laughs> as long as we don't have a quorum of us at any one table without posting it first. Any, any other um, comments on the, um, the outreach effort uh, for this year? I, I just have a question or a clarification. Um, I just want to make sure that I heard right. Um, the micro engagement will happen on an annual basis. And did I hear that the survey will happen every five years? Is that correct? That's the timeline that we were envisioning. Okay, I think that's great. Um, I guess just my comment is that um, it would be great to kind of build upon um, the engagement that we've already done. So I just wanted to make sure that the survey wasn't being replaced on an annual basis, because I think um, building on the engagement would be really great. Yeah, we were thinking of adding our findings to the plan, but not, certainly not deleting the findings from the survey, but just like you said, building on the findings from the survey in the plan. Thank you so much. The other question I have about um, the process going forward, um, even this past year, there were a number of good ideas identified through the public hearing and, and through other sort of engagement process, but there was no champion for that idea to actually submit an application. And I'm sort of curious if and this may be a kind of a challenge for us to work out over time, but how do we translate we don't actually, as a committee, implement projects. Uh, we're, not, we're not the ones who are going to go out and do the projects. Somebody still has to actually apply for the projects. And, and it's not fair to expect residents to just necessarily have that capacity themselves. Some do, and that's great, but not all. Uh, so do we have a, a sort of a way, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way to share that information of what has come out as community interest not just with the committee members, but with either city departments or the you know, various uh, you know, nonprofit partners. Um, can we publicize that information in some way to encourage people to 
people who do have the capacity to implement the projects to consider as they're thinking about applications what folks have said they're interested in. Any thoughts on that? That's a great comment. It's something that in the DPD, especially as it related to the open space and recreation um, ideas that we've heard, we have an open space and recreation plan that has a seven-year implementation um, that was done two years ago. But I do think with new district representation, there is a more of a focus on, well, one, I think there's renewed interest in, in civic engagement, so there's more voices that maybe we didn't capture that last planning process. And I also think, you know, there's more focus on individual neighborhoods and making sure that we're being equitable throughout, you know, there's limited resources. So we at DPD, at least for the open space and recreation and park projects, have been starting to come up with criteria and a queue because we only have so much staff and so much funding. And, and I think sometimes there's a misunderstanding of how long these projects actually take, soup to nuts. If you want a park project done this summer, we should have started planning two years ago. And so I think, uh, I know, you know, as myself, as the DPD director on the committee with three staff here, um, we do communicate quite a bit. And I think for like the open, the park st stuff, that's, we are gonna take it and it's gonna be part of our decision making process. Um, I'm open to suggestions for how to do that for, for community housing and historic preservation. Um, community housing, I think DPD, again, we have a pool of federal entitlement funds that we, we use to support projects, and so I don't know if it's something that, you know, projects who have received city funds, maybe we don't prioritize them for CPC, I don't know. So. Uh, I've got one bucket down, so I'm open to ideas about others. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a work in progress, and, and yeah. I think sometimes, um, yeah, so that's, mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. <laughs> well, let's, let's see what the feedback is, and then let's see what, uh, what, we, what we can do with, do with it. Uh, the great thing is if we start getting in, you know, some of this feedback over the course of the spring, there is some time for us to publicize what we're hearing and, and see if there's people out there who might uh, might be interested in taking up the mantle of some of the good ideas again. I, I, I think you're right. I think parks are parks are going to be where a lot of community interest is, and there's a pretty straightforward process for translating that into implementation. There is it's a little more complicated when it comes or a lot more complicated when it comes to housing and historic preservation. So there usually has to be some sort of a a, a property owner involved in that effort. So. <clears throat> Any <clears throat> any other comments on the outreach? Right. Other than once again to thank our staff for coming up with a great plan. Um, that is it for our substantive agenda tonight. Um, do we have any other comments from members? I have a comment. I'm just going to introduce Serena. She's the new assistant planner and will be the CPC taking over the as the CPC coordinator. Um, She's originally from Salem and comes to us from uh, Bryn Mawr College. Do you want to say a few words on your behalf? <laughs> we'll call on you on the first night. <laughs> All set? We're All so right. excited well, to have you on the team, Serena. Yes. Welcome, Serena. <laughs> Welcome. All right. Um, hearing nothing else, I want to also just one more time thank um, the fellow committee, my fellow committee members. Um, it's been a real pleasure to work with you through this year. I look forward to working with you on the upcoming year. And um, I think uh, your varied perspectives and insights have led to a really fantastic set of projects that are going to make a real difference in the community. And I think you all should feel very proud of that. So thank you. And if we have no other comments, anyone want to make the best motion of the night? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. And do we have a second? All right. All those in favor? All right. No one's opposed. Thanks. And have a good night, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.